Jaguar show. Another clear night in my Bortle 2 zone. And today is calm and clear. There are some clouds in the horizon part, but hopefully it doesn't affect us too much. Scorpio is in a perfect location. So before it gets too far, you know what? Maybe I gotta change that. Because even though I can kind of see Scorpio, the clouds, as I said, is right beside it. So I was gonna say, maybe we can take a look at M4, maybe M6 and seven or something like that. But because the cloud is there, I don't, it's gonna be in our way. So here's what we're gonna do then today. You know, a lot of people, they like to look at the, I got the flash on now, but I'm gonna turn it off uh, in a little bit. A lot of people like to look at the Big Dipper constellation in the fall because it kind of swings down. But right now, since it's just starting in the summer, it's actually almost, I mean, when I was here a few weeks back, three weeks ago, it was directly up of ahead. It's on its downward onward. So I think if you guys, I know the summer stuff is coming out. I think it's a better time to look at the stuff around the Big Dipper. And that's because it's so high up instead of it swinging down and then trying to look at it, you're looking through more atmosphere. Yep. Since it's high up, it's going to be the best time to view, let's say, M51, you know, two galaxies. And you could actually kind of see the swirling and you can kind of see like they're kind of merging, you know, when this dark of a sky with like a 12 inch or bigger. Uh, maybe let's go for 101, which is a very dim face on galaxy and maybe 81 and 82. Uh, let me tell you how it looks from up here. So let's do those three things and then we'll check out uh, another video, a few other things. Okay, let's get to it. Okay guys, so I am using one red light. So you guys can kind of see me since it's so dark. Um, oh yeah, I can see the Milky Way now, easily there. And I can even see Cassiopeia. I mean, it's facing north uh, east right now. But um, anyway, so I only have one light on because that way you guys can kind of see me, but it doesn't ruin my dark adaption. Unfortunately, when I use more than one, then the dim stuff that we look at, it's hard to see. Anyway, so we are going to be looking at the M51. I just popped in an inch and a quarter, 38 millimeter eyepiece. And as you can see, the angle, it's probably about uh, 70 degrees. Yep, I can see it. I, the problem is this light is in my way. Uh, okay, so let's put it behind me. Hopefully you guys can still see me somewhat. I can see two little fuzzy glows, but you know, now my eyes is not adapted again. So I can see both galaxies, but let's pump up the power. So again, I don't think I'm dark adapted because I got this light, this flashlight, the phone app is on. Uh, this light is bouncing off the car. But uh, anyway, I just put in a 13 Nagler. Okay, let me focus. Actually, I'm gonna turn this off for a few minutes. Look, and then I'll come back to you guys. With the inch and a quarter 38 millimeter, you can definitely see it. Uh, the best view, uh, I did the 13 Nagler and I also did a 6.7 ultra wide. Now this still fit in the 6.7. And even with an 82 degree field of view, I feel it's a little too close. So you can't see the, uh, like enough background sky and it doesn't really enhance it much more. So the 13 seems to be the best. And if you wait, you know, even five minutes with no light on and you study it and you do averted vision, you can definitely see the swirling around it. And it's like they're merging. So um, that's cool. So definitely you guys tell me, how do you see it? What conditions, sky conditions, and what telescope do you see it in? Now, since we're in this location, I hope it's not getting hazy. Um, yeah, the sky, 
There are some clouds. It totally covered up Scorpio. I can't even see Scorpio at all. So I don't know if it's getting hazy. Unfortunately, this is what happens sometimes, you know. Nothing you could do. Anyway, um, that's why we're up in this direction anyway. But hopefully, it doesn't get worse because uh, then that's about it. So, you know what? Let's go to M101 now. It's also a fairly big galaxy. Kind of dim, I would say. Uh, of course, depends on what sky location you're at. And, of course, how big of a telescope. But let me see what I can show you in today's condition. And hopefully, like I said, it's not getting hazy because that would suck. The good thing is 101 is not very far from M51. It's maybe about 15 degrees away, so uh, maybe I'll show it to you on the screen. Uh, let me see how this guy is looking. Uh, okay, good thing we're looking in this direction, I guess. And Okay, so 101 is a face-on galaxy. Oh, let me focus. Okay, I believe I see it. So let's take out the 38. You know, sometimes to have something low power, like a 25 uh, or 26, 28, 30, 32, 38, you know, it, it makes it easier to find, um, which is good. But uh, it's just a like, a, like a low power finding type of device or power. Um, and then you got to bump up the power. You know, I think with the 13, it's a little bit too close. I do see a gray smudge, but uh, it's not super bright, I would say. It's kind of almost blending into the sky background. So let me back out the power. I remember, too, I also have this light on, which uh, doesn't help when you're doing deep sky objects with something that's not so bright. Uh, let's do, I'm, I put in an 18 millimeter super wide. It actually feels, a, a, with an 18 millimeter, I think is better. It's not as close. And I could see it, you know, as a fuzzy face on. And it doesn't look symmetrical to me. It looks a little bit like brighter on one side. I think even a, a lower power would be beneficial. Okay, we're going to try a 24.5 mead super wide angle. And I think the lower power might help us. So sometimes you guys got to try uh, like a different power. Closer power sometimes helps. It, it changes the background, a sky a little darker. And sometimes it doesn't help when you're too close. It's a little bit smaller. And I can see more sky around it. Now, again, I got this light on. Maybe if I turn it off and wait 10 minutes. Uh, I mean, people say it like 20 minutes, 30 minutes with no lights on at all. But I don't have that kind of time right now. But um, it's not super bright. Most people might probably say, eh, not so interesting. But you can check it out. Tell me how you see it and what size and what do you think of it doesn't look super great on me but again remember the condition or i wouldn't have a light on when i'm observing these dim stuff but uh, it's what it is uh, to show you guys but uh, it's okay you can definitely see it from the background yeah it's not too bad i don't know if i see any swirling marks again if i turned off the light wait half an hour maybe i might see a little bit better but uh from here let's go on to m81 and 82. that's the next thing I remember too, we're picking this because it's more higher up. And uh, unfortunately, a good third of the sky has turned a little cloudy. I didn't think it was gonna get cloudy, but you know what? At least we're tackling three things today. It's still at a decent, uh, that might be around 45 degrees, roughly 50 degrees I'm pointing. So it's not too low. And I know in the fall, you know, you can see the dipper easier. Uh, but it's skimming the sky type of thing. And I don't want to wait till it's that low. Okay, let's try the 38 millimeter. 
in an inch and a quarter format. And then let's maybe try a two inch. Oh, there we go. I think I can easily see it now. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn off the camera and uh, turn off the light. Okay guys, unfortunately, and that's probably why I'm not seeing it too well in the eyepiece is the sky is kind of deteriorated. It looks like you got medium thick clouds now, about a third of the sky, but then it's, even though I got a little pocket right there, it's kind of like where we're observing. Which sucks because, you know, I could have came out maybe 20 minutes earlier and I got a little bit more time, but uh, even Vega and Lyra constellation kind of looks washed out. Uh, looks like thin clouds are coming in. And there's only a small little section right there. Maybe what I'll do is I'll pack up, or not pack up, I'm actually just going to go inside. I'm going to leave everything out here and uh, see if it clears up in a little while. I can't really see much. And that's a good indication that the sky, you know, th th these two galaxies are actually fairly bright. And if you can't see them, I kind of, yeah, I see a little glow, but it's just the sky quality is not that good right now. Okay, oh wow, okay, you can really see them easy. So I'm using a 30 millimeter, uh, two inch uh, eyepiece with an 82 degree field of view. I don't know, maybe the thin clouds parted but you can now see, oh, and now it's gone. Damn it. I was just about to say, you can clearly see, um, these two are actually brighter than, uh, I think, from what I saw M51 and M101, these two are actually brighter. You can see their galaxies. They're both in the same field of view. And I still had a good 25% minimum uh, field of view, extra sky to see them, but no. Nope. I can't even see all the stars in the dipper. So, okay, I'm gonna go inside. I'll check in about half an hour and see, but you know, I got 10 seconds there. Is it clearing up? Waiting game, I don't know. Um, I got like 10 seconds right there. Not much, but what can I do? Okay, guys, I'm gonna go inside. We'll talk later. Those are the three things. Um, if you guys do normally look at M81 uh, and M82, the, I think they're the brightest pair in the sky. The, the two in Leo is not too far behind. But uh, if you do look at it, where do you look at it? What size? And do you clearly see them type of thing? Anyway, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. This is what happens with Mother Nature. Uh, you can't do anything, I guess. And uh, that's it. Why not you? Why not me?